Hello Pre-Calculus students, this is Mr. McAllen speaking and today we are on day one of unit seven and this is our first day for working with trig identities and what we're going to do is we're going to basically um, describe or I'm going to describe um, the most important identities for this section and um, as a result we're going to want you to make a note card uh, to help yourself out with these so that you can quickly reference them. As we go through this unit, this uh, information should become more and more um, second nature where you will not need your note card for help. Part of your um, um, homework credit will be based upon if you have that note card tomorrow. So please make sure you come to class with this note card so that we can verify that you did in fact, um, you know, watch the video and do the work. So. We're going to start out with recognizing, uh, we're going to talk about 12 trig identities, and then we've got three examples for how to recognize when to switch identities, um, how to multiply by the reciprocal function, or replacing um, a tangent with a cotangent. So we have some example problems uh, at the end after we um, go over the basic identities. So the first ones we're going to start off with are six identities called, well, they're the six reciprocal identities, and you guys know these already from previous work in trigonometry. You know that the sine function, I'm going to write the sine of x, is equal to 1 over the cosecant of x. You know that the cosine function is equal to 1 over the secant of x, and you know that the tangent function is equal 1 over the cotangent of x. So these are three identities that you already knew, and if you knew these three, you actually know six. And um, this is nothing special, so I'm just going to write this real quick. So this is the cosecant is equal 1 over the sine of x. The um, secant, I, secant identity is equal to 1 over the cosine of x. And the cotangent um, of x is equal to 1 over the tangent of x. And as you can see, um, there's no um, doubt why this is called the reciprocal identities, because these are basically um, one identity is a reciprocal of the other. And you should know from our work in trig from before why these pair up together. The next are, there are um, two quotient identities. And these identities are um, the tangent of x is equal to, and we did this when we were working um, with our chart to remember quadrantal angles. We said the tangent function is equal to the sine over cosine, and the cotangent, its quotient identity, is equal to the cosine of x over the sine of x. And this should make sense because, um, you know, remember that sine was equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and um, cosine is equal to um, adjacent over hypotenuse. And if you notice, the denominators are the same, so the, hy the, the hypotenuse will both cancel, and you'll be left with opposite over adjacent, which brings us back to um, the tangent ratio. So this is just a more of a, um, a layman's proof of how to figure that the sine over cosine is equal to the tangent. And for the same matter, you would find that um, the cotangent is equal to the cosine over the sine of x. Anyhow, that's our, those are our two quotient identities. And now we will work with three Pythagorean identities. Now these Pythagorean identities are that I always say to people, remember the first one, because the first one is just the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x is equal to 1. Now I wanted to point out a couple important facts about this. When you write sine squared of x, that's shorthand notation for the sine of x, the entire quantity squared. And the same thing for the cosine squared of x. The second Pythagorean identity, Pythagorean identity is 1 plus the cotangent squared of x is equal to the um, cosecant squared of x. And I had to like do a little mental math to kind of remember that for myself. And the third one is um, the tangent squared of x is plus 1 is equal to the secant squared of x. Now, um, the, you can find lots and lots of videos on how to remember these uh, identities, but um, I could show you very quickly how to remember these if you can remember the most basic identity. If you can remember this identity, then we can work with finding the other two. 
So let me prove it. I'll prove identity number two. So you start out by writing the basic Pythagorean identity. Now, um, you pick sine or cosine squared to divide, uh, to, to use as, uh, to basically divide the entire identity. So if I say, well, I want to divide everything by sine squared of x. So I'll divide this by sine squared of x. I'll divide this by sine squared of x. And I'll divide this by sine squared of x. Now you get to the point where you get your second identity, where you have 1, because this is equal to 1. This is equal to, remember how um, cosine over sine is equal to cotangent? Well, this is just cotangent squared of x. And then 1 over sine squared of x, and we're going to use our reciprocal identity and call that cosecant squared of x. So that's how we prove that identity. What I'm going to have you do as a warm-up tomorrow when you come to class is show me how you get to this by dividing everything by cosine squared of x. So make sure you try that out and see if you can come up with that on your own. But basically, we're done with going through our um, 11, I think there are 11, there are six reciprocal, two quotient, and three Pythagorean identities. So we have 11 identities that we want you to put on one note card. I'm just going to show you, um, I'm going to bring up last year's note card that everybody used so you can you can pause the video and you can copy this down so you have it for reference. Okay, I'm back. Um, I basically took a, a um, screen capture of the note card that we had from last year. And it basically has in the first uh, top part, we have our six, um, well, we have our six, let me just make sure I have this right. We have our six um, reciprocal identities written up. We have over here our two quotient identities. And we have on the bottom our three Pythagorean identities that we want you to use and make into a note card. And I expect to see this note card tomorrow when you come in um, to class. So uh, make sure it's neat and tidy and you understand where those squared terms are on each one of these, and you copy down correctly so that there are no, um, no mistakes on any problems that we do. So the next thing we're gonna work on after you have that note card copied down is we're gonna work through three simple problems on, um, on, with identities and what we do to basically simplify um, identities. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, copy this note card and bring it along with me so that we can do some problems on the side here. So I have something to reference. So on our first problem, we have uh, simplify the function, and this is what we're gonna be doing in class. We wanna simplify this function to just one, um, just one term. And, um, and so what we do is we, it, hopefully you notice that this looks really familiar to um, one of these identities. And, if you look down here, you can see we have sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. So what we can do is we can replace, um, we, we can manipulate this where if we just subtract the cosine squared to the other side, we get a replacement for 1 minus cosine squared. This is one of the most classic um, simplifications for a trig relationship or a trig um, uh, a, a trig term is to use the Pythagorean identity and to change 1 minus cosine squared of x into the expression of just sine squared of x. So this would be our first example. Second example is when you see that you have the sine and cotangent. So in this, we want to simplify it to one expression. So what I always say to people is, if you can, switch um, any expression that is not a sine or a cosine into sines and cosines. So we'll look, we know we have an identity for cotangent, which is in terms of sines and cosines, and that's over here. And it says cotangent can be replaced because it's identically equal to cosine over sine. Now, when we're multiplying 
um, these two terms by each other, we see that the sines cancel and we're left with just one term, the cosine of x. And for our third example, we see that we have a, another thing that we can do. Let me just, um, okay, so again, we see that we have what looks like a trig identity, a Pythagorean identity. Remember before we said one minus cosine squared can be replaced with sine squared of x. And if we multiply that by cosecant of x, um, we've, we have simplified it because we used to have a more complicated term, now it's just one term. But we, if we change this using a reciprocal identity to one over sine of x, we can yet simplify this some more. And cosecant on our identity chart, cosecant is equal to one over the sine of x, so that's the replacement I made. And now when you multiply these through, you get sine squared of x over the sine of x and this cancels with that exponent, leaving us with just one trig term. Hopefully this uh, video has been a good introduction to working with trig identities and simplifications, and I look forward to hearing your comments tomorrow in class when we work out some more problems.